Hi everybody, this is Liam Martin from Running Remote. And did you know that last month, Google told its employees their pay will be lowered if they switch to working from home permanently and the remote location has lower labor costs than where their former offices are located. This news fueled a discussion that has been familiar to all remote first companies for a long time. Should you pay your employees a location-based salary or a location independent salary? In this video, I'm gonna talk about the pros and cons of each approach and share how we do this at Time Doctor. First off, before you come after me in the comments, there's no right answer to this question. Every company decides what's right or wrong for them. Besides Google, other social media giants such as Facebook and Twitter also cut pay for remote employees who move to a less expensive area. At the same time, smaller companies, including Reddit and Zillow, have shifted to a location agnostic pay model. The question gets only more complicated when it comes to hiring internationally. GitLab, a pioneer in the majority of remote first issues, doesn't consider the cost of living, but uses a special compensation calculator. Buffer created a unique formula where the location is just one out of four variables. Literally, if we're just taking a look at the buffers formula, it's overall base plus location base plus cost of living times roll value, or, or basically the location times cost of living equals your salary. So let's get into location-based salary. <clears throat> location-based salaries are considered to be more equitable. Employees in the same position receive similar take-home pay because their salary accounts for low tax rates and cost of living. You can also attract top talent without paying the highest rates across all markets. The cons of location-based salaries are that it can be hard to calculate. You need to take into account many factors. Number one, market rates, the range of pay for a specific position in a local area and or the country as a whole. Number two is experience, and number three is cost of living index, a measure of the area's core expenses, including housing, transportation, meals, utilities, and more. The tool Numbio uh, breaks down typical costs and index figures for cities all over the world, allowing companies to compare employees' cost of living. That might be pretty helpful to you if you're trying to make the calculations a little bit easier. Number four, income tax rates. Companies may consider giving international employees who live in countries with a specifically high tax rates. Canada, by the way. A slightly higher salary boost. Another con of the location-based salary is that companies may take advantage of employees from less economically developed regions, offering them smaller compensations for the same amount of work compared to their US employees. However, the other side of this coin is that the free market provides employers the ability to hire cheaper labor, and eventually those numbers will equalize as less economically developed countries' workforces ask for higher salaries. Next up, let's talk about location-independent salaries. The good thing about this model is that it's much easier to calculate. There are just two variables to assess the value-based salaries, the national market rate for the position and the employee's level of experience. Some companies like Buffer also add here employee loyalty, which is the number of years that you actually worked inside of the company. Pros for the companies are increased employees' loyalty and attracting the most talented candidates. The con is that expenses on salaries are obviously higher than in the first case. So you're probably asking yourself, sure Liam, all of that is really well and good, but what do you actually do? Well. Here is my opinion. Whatever model you choose, make sure you fine tune it to your case. For example, you can pay location-based salaries and apply location independent benefits to all your employees, or you can add your own criteria to the location independent salary formula. In our companies, we do honestly a hybridization of the two. Since we have team members in over 40 countries, it's incredibly complicated, and some positions are honestly not available in the vast majority of countries. As an example, let's say you were looking for an HR director who has had experience managing a remote first distributed company with more than 500 employees. A year ago, that list was about 86 candidates long because we actually did that search. And the vast majority were located in the United States. Plus, with 86 people on planet Earth with that kind of experience, we weren't in a position to be choosy. Other positions where we can take our processes, apply them to people who have the right core DNA and turn them into fantastic engineers, salespeople, marketers, etc., are easier to negotiate with as we're literally leveling them up and they're getting as much out of the deal as we are. So whatever you choose, make sure not to repeat Google's mistake. After the company decided to adjust the salaries of employees based on location, it turned out that some of the people ended up having a salary cut even though they hadn't actually moved out of the office. This was the case for employees commuting an hour from Stanford to San Francisco, for instance. Big fail on their part and they actually got into a lot of hot water for it. Altering the rates of pay without negotiating this with employees first can seriously 
harm the company's brand and employee retention. As companies plan their office futures, salaries will be more than accounting for this issue. How you choose to pay remote employees will have a lasting impact on your company culture. So I hope that was helpful to you. If it was, let me know with a comment down below. Do you pay location-based or location-independent? I'm very interested in hearing your perspective on it because it could be interesting. Maybe I'll change my perspective on it. If you hated this video and you think I'm an idiot, please also put that down in the comments below as I'd be happy to fight you in the comments. And also, while you're down there, uh, why don't you just subscribe to this YouTube channel? It is indeed free and we talk about this stuff all day long. See you in the next video.